evolutionary, we know we're proactive, and then we call them reactionaries, you know, because they react. Reformists, the things that isn't like, between revolution and reform. Because, see, the thing is, as a revolutionary, you obviously have a program of action that does not include your enemy. Your your enemy is your enemy. Of course, your enemy has a material form, but then your enemy also has a immaterial form. It's just like the Christians would say, uh, you fighting the devil. So then, at that point, you must realize that uh, the devil has, is an evil spirit. It's bad. It's, it's, it's different ideas that are not good but then at the same time of course there are people that enact these different ideas at different times so as a revolutionary we deal with the material of course but we also deal with the immaterial as well so uh, the difference between revolution and reaction and uh, I like to use racism as an example because as a people Especially, uh, I'm going to use African women because African women are triply oppressed. They're triply oppressed. They're oppressed by classicism, racism, and sexism. Even though classicism or the idea of having hierarchies, class, like in India, if you, uh, historically they've had a caste system. Of course, it's been a caste system enforced by religion, saying that, you know, uh, by some act of God, you are in this position and that's the position you stay in in your entire life until you are uh, reincarnated. So that, that that's of course uh, the fundamentals of an you know ancient fundamental type of belief of course but we live in capitalism now and of course you know uh, most people you can consider it you know however but most people who born poor here you know pretty much stay poor <laughs> so call it a caste system a class system or however but the thing about you know they trick you with the American dream is you know it's not I, I consider the American dream it's not what I have but it's what I think I can get <laughs> you know so it's just a thing like this where uh, as a people our ideology must be one because again I, I spoke on Pan-Africanism because this is the thing it's like uh, a lot of people have heard of Pan-Africanism the unification of Africa under scientific socialism but then they question socialism or they question uh, well why am I going to focus on Africa and I'm in America you know what I'm saying and I'm not going to get into all the reasons all the strategies why uh, as far as like if anybody understands the Garvey movement and the purpose of starting a shipping line or having your own economic foundation and base and raw materials to make you know manufacture and ship anyone who is familiar with Standard Oil Standard Oil which you can see British Petroleum, Amoco, Standard, Chevron uh, they ended up breaking Standard Oil up but uh, Rockefeller basically started this because he had the land that had the oil, he had the drilling companies, he also had the uh, the ships that got the oil here, all the way to the gas station. He ran the whole operation from the rooter to the tour. So that's what we must look, I mean as African people we must understand that through the course of any economic system, of course, you have the raw material that's being manufactured then that manufacturing has to be shipped and stored and until it reaches its retail point so uh, as a people obviously you can see the reason of Pan-Africanism on that level because everybody I think any progressive African African that thinks has some level of Pan-Africanism in them they may say uh, you know I just want to I still want to remember my African heritage, you know, even today, people call themselves, you know, African American, African hyphen American or whatever. So then it's just like, you know, I want, that's the part of Pan-Africanism. Some people had an idea that, well, we should set up some type of economic ties or, 
you know, these types of things. So we can see the idea of uh, either going there materially with uh, actually repatriation. Uh, we can see it also as far as material and uh, setting up economic, some economic trade, import and export uh, of manufactured and, you know, because one thing that the neo-colonialists did, the colonizers did, is they took out the raw materials and then took the raw materials to their mother countries, manufactured them, and then sold them back to the Africans and in a finished product form. You know, getting the raw materials out for cheap, then taking it there, making it, giving their people jobs, and then selling it back to you. You know, at the same time, and you buying the stuff off the menial job of mining it out of the ground or whatever. But it's not getting it to all that, but just saying, as a Pan Africanist, we end up seeing that for some reason, you know, it's just it's just a typical thing of how people may want to deny what they know they should really be doing, and that's the thing with Pan Africanism. It's like the unification of Africa under scientific socialism is imperative. I mean, it's necessary for our survival that our people be unified. And then that's the thing right now is just that our people are unified. There's many different strategies. There's many different strategies. You are in Britain or the Caribbean or what have you. I mean, it is very important that you, uh, you know, unify your people there. But then we must obviously be ready to take it to the next level. But just saying, we have, uh, these different, uh, you know, as a Pan-African, uh, we, we see it. We see that it's there and it's our objective. But that's the thing. It's like either with that or a lot of people uh, choose, I guess I call it like if you want to look at it like freelancing or they freestyle through, you know, our current movement phase. And that's the thing. Movement is a certain objective. Right now, we're in a movement. A lot of people uh, look at it like we need to... Um, I guess get money you know what I'm saying whereas we have money uh, Africans for instance our, uh, Africans in America have over 400 they make over 400 billion dollars a year generated into the economy that's more than a lot of countries around the world I mean whole countries you know with more people have uh, less money than that and they have a country and so that's the thing with with us is it's just a matter of organization it's a matter of ideology you have the proper objectives you know what I'm saying so that you have the proper action you know because you're coming from the proper thought base but then that's what I was saying about in revolutionary reaction as a revolutionary we're pan african we say reactionary philosophy because as I was speaking on the three different our, our people are oppressed and one thing about class or the caste system is that racism is still part of class. You know, sexism is still part of a class system. So that's why uh, when, it's, it's just for FYI, when you debating uh, communists or uh, people who are communists who choose to only focus on class, period. Like we have never made an economic class. We will eliminate racism eventually eventually we will eliminate sexism whereas we say that racism has grown into its own entity as women will say sexism has grown into its own entity devoid of the actual financial structure so uh, but as a, as a, a staunch down uh, I guess class person myself I would also argue that uh, the economic structure needs to be changed 